Hello again. In this lecture, we're looking at the hypothesis test for Poisson parameters. So we saw the binomial earlier. This is exactly the same in principle. All that's different is now we look at another set of tables, the Poisson tables, to calculate and determine p-values. So let's take a look at the example here. Quality control requires the number of stitching flows on a garment to be at most one on average. So at most one on average is what we require. So what was done was inspection of a random sample of three garments. And the total number of flows was six. So the question here is, are the average number of flows per garment as required by a quality control? In other words, is it at most one per garment? And we'll use here a significance level of 2.5%. So we'll set this up by first of all defining ourselves random variables and the distribution. So what we actually did was we sampled three garments and that's what we'll base it on our decision and our, our statistics on here. So let the random variable x denote the number of flaws in three garments. Then here we'll model x as Poisson and the parameter here is excuse me, get back to this. Oh, it's got quite a part. Yep. So the parameter here is mu. And we'll define the mu here. So mu is the mean number of floors in three garments. So my hypothesis here, the non-hypothesis will be what was required. My requirement from the quality control. So if I want one at most on average on one garment, that means I want three on average on three garments. So this will simply say mu equals three. And of course if I have more excuse me, not mu equals mu, mu equals three. And if I have more than that, then I have a problem. So mu bigger than three is what my alternative hypothesis will be. So what I observed over here, my observed value of the test statistic is we actually found six flaws my p-value here is going to be probability of getting 6 or more is always in the same direction x is bigger than or equal to 6 and that inequality holds here as well it's in the same direction all the time as in the alternative hypothesis and this is under the assumption that mu is actually equal to 3 and that's my null hypothesis value my h naught value So as before, I require to look up tables, what is Poisson tables, and again it's 1 minus the complement, probability of x less than or equal to 5, given that mu is 3. So this time, I'll need to look up Poisson tables. So here they are, exactly the same as binomial, I've got individual probabilities, so this is essentially here, for example, probability x equals 0, 
for x that is pass on the mean here is 0.6 and so that is point zero sorry point five four eight eight and further down I have the cumulative probabilities so this here for example if x is pass on point seven the mean is point seven and yeah, the mean is listed over here and then probability that x is less than or equal to 1 is that value there, 8442. In our case, we have Poisson 3, and I want x less than or equal to 5. So I go down to Poisson 3, and there it is, less than or equal to 5. 9161. So that's 1 minus 0 0.9161 and that's 0 0.0839. And so my significance level here was 2.5%. So this is bigger than 0 0.025. That means we don't have, then there's insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So while we actually observed six on three garments, we expected three, and we've got twice as many, even then we don't reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the random chance idea here, that you get a variation, natural variation, so even if the average is one per garment, you can get six in three garments. So we conclude here that based on this this data or this analysis so we always relate this or associate this or base it on the data but the mean number of flaws per garment is not more than one In other words, the quality control requirement is met. Now, often you'll find people writing this as there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis at the 2.5% level of significance. And this is also good. So it's not just saying we won't reject the null hypothesis, it's also stating the significance level. So that's also good. So that covers the material for hypothesis tests for binary and Poisson. Some examples would be good so you can practice these, and I've got some examples here and later on. Thank you.